TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. And all around the world, because I don't know exactly where this is in the world that we're watching. But don't forget, we do got Patreon, where we post five days per week. And we also got Twitch. <laughs> Twitch.com. Usernames at the bottom of the screen, man. Catch a live, a previous live, or anything like that. This is the world's most luxurious prison. All right. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me. I'm Anne Whittacombe, and I'm in Norway. Mm, it would be in Norway. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Norway is a beautiful place. So they gotta have a beautiful prison. Look at it. It's two toned, it's gray and black, like. It don't even got no barbed wire around it. This is aesthetically pleasing. I've come to one of the most unusual prisons in the world. This is a spa. It's a hot. Okay. With a very relaxed approach to relationships. You get visits two times a week. They can have sex. Yeah. Don't worry, you won't get me on the floor. Then they are. Some murder. Need you lie. Well, wait. What I. Let's be clear. Prison works. It ensures that we are protected from murderers, muggers, and rapists. When I was prisons minister back in the 1990s, the government believed that prison was meant to be a stern place, a deterrent as well as a punishment. We will scrap early. What's her accent? Where's she from? Release. You will I couldn't be detained, hear you will be dealt with speedily, and you will be removed. Zero tolerance. But were we right? Dealt with speedily, and you. She had this haircut for a lifetime. That's tough to not switch it up and be consistent. You will be removed. Zero tolerance. But were we right? Today, our prisons are bursting at the seams and stacked full of repeat offenders. I've heard. Yeah, I mean, what part of Britain, though? <laughs> heard that prisons in Norway are very different. More maximum comfort than maximum security. And their reoffending rates are the lowest in the world. So I'm on my way to Holden Prison, which I'm told is the most luxurious of them all. I think the phrase. I don't know why, like, luxurious or prisons with too much amenities don't don't take me wrong, man. Like, salute free everybody, man. Free the guy. But, like, too much amenities piss me off. Like, first of all. Don't go to prison and live a better life than me as a free man. Like, that's going to anger me. You know what I'm saying? He's decent but austere uh, sums up my idea of what imprisonment is. You're not being taken off to a hotel for a few months or a few years. You're being taken to a place of, of incarceration. So uh, you should know every day that you're in prison. Holden was built in 2010 as a groundbreaking experiment and how I had to go into Cook County, not Cook County, yeah, Cook County. I had to sit there for two days, so I, two, three days. So I, my experience <laughs> needs to line up, you know what I'm saying? And at that point, I'm hating. If your experience was better than mine, I'm hating. This is some of Norway's most dangerous men. Fairly typical prison entrance. First thing you notice is the uh, is the wall, of course, and the lights. Got an intercom system. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Anne Whitaker. I've come to visit your prison. Uh, what is your name? Anne Whitaker. Anne Whitaker. Come. I am told that behind these walls is a prison unlike any I visited before. And I've been to over 135 prisons. Door heavy. Good morning. Uh, can I see your ID, please? ID, yes. My uh, EU. Hello. 
Okay, looks very clean starting here. It's typical though. Two passport, not for much longer. This is a maximum security prison. There are men here who have committed very disturbing crimes, including murder, rape, and child abuse. See what I'm saying? That last one and the last two is crazy. They're all crazy, but the last two to be sitting up in here luxuriously, that, that, see? I am utterly you. What makes them deserve to be in this luxury? I know they're going to get in whatever prison they have available. And this is Norway, but like... To spending my time amidst all sorts of criminals from the very small uh, right up to the multiple murderers. Uh, and indeed, in my day, the IRA. I don't shudder away from that. That's as normal as blueberry pie. So, do you know anything about this prison? I'm told it's more like a hotel than a prison. With the uh, room service and stuff? Is that what well, you're I saying? doubt if you have room service. Okay. Um, but I'm told that you have ensuite facilities in the yeah. rooms. Yeah. And that the rooms are quite nice. Yeah. I mean, if this is anything like I've been told, I get the impression they might want to come back again. Halden is Norway's second largest prison. It cost 138 million pounds to build and was designed not to look or feel like a prison. Living this life of luxury are 40 murderers, 20 rapists and 20 child molesters. Oh, and it's also home to around 60 drug dealers. This is the area where the inmates... Okay, that's home to 60... Okay. But the last... Uh, the first three is... Uh, come for the first time. Now, the first thing I notice here is... I don't think child abusers and, and, and R-worders should be in here. I feel like there's really no forgiveness for those two. They don't deserve a prison like this. <laughs> they don't deserve to be properly rehabilitated. In my personal opinion. <laughs> there isn't a bar in sight. No. You won't see that, I guess, uh, almost nowhere around the prison. No, no bars. bars. No. No bars? Right. You will Just be doors. I would be very surprised. What's your escape rate? Zero. No escapes. Mm. What sort of prisoners are you getting here? Every kind of... Uh, You're events. very violent ones. Yeah. We are a maximum security prison. And no bars? No. In this maximum security prison? No. Mm. Right. She is baffled. If you're in prison in Britain, you know every single minute of every hour of every day that you are in prison. You're not allowed to forget it. Whereas here, that's the point. We meet them here and we greet them with a handshake. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like that's, this? That's all right. Yeah. 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 yeah and we, cool. then we can kind of get a uh, feel And feeling. if they wanted to hug you, could they? No. Good. Hmm. Man, this is what I need to see. At this, at this point, I need to see what is the, the reoffending rate to come back. If, the, it's, if it's super low, then it works. If it's on par with the rest of the area, <laughs> it don't work. Good. I am glad there are limits yeah, somewhere. We, ha yeah. we ha have limits. Yeah, we do. Well, I've never been to a prison without bars before. And welcoming inmates with a friendly handshake does seem a bit odd. But there's one thing that's rife in prisons all over the world. And it requires more than a firm handshake to root out. So this is where we strip search, strip search. the inmates, uh, taking all their belongings and give them our uh, clothing. Do you do an intimate search? Well, not inside of them. But you don't? Well, what happens if they've got drugs inside them? We search their mouth and we ask them to, to sit down like this when they're off clothing. And if something pops out, then we know. But we're not allowed to but search But you don't anything. actually do an intimate search, so no. they, could, they could have drugs. They could have inside. drugs, yeah. They could. This is a maximum security prison. But just say to yourself, Maximum security prison. It's not a. It's not that it's not max. Prison. It's not even what we would call a cat C trainer. This is a maximum security prison. So far, it's all been a bit too relaxed for my liking, and I am baffled by. It looks like a huge house, like a compound. <laughs> the lack of intimate drug searches. There are 60 drug dealers here, for goodness sake. 
Although at this point, there don't seem to be many of them around. It's a bit like an empty school. I don't get the impression that there are more than 200 inmates here. Now, you go into a UK prison uh, and you go through the uh, gate onto the landings, through the door onto the landings, and it is just a seething mass of prisoners. It's a different atmosphere altogether. You try going into Wandsworth. I'm curious to see what a typical cell looks like, which here they cheerfully call rooms. Now I will re reveal the luxury room. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that and see. Strange already. This documentary shows the keys. Normally, you know, we watch a lot of documentaries, a lot of prison documentaries. They blur out the keys. What's your mind is after we've seen it? Oh. What do you think about this? Well, first thing that hits me between the eyes is there are no bars on the window. Yeah. It's well, why don't they just get out? Because the glass is like this thick. That makes sense. I have no problem with there being no bars on the window. It's, it's, it's probably helps mental health, but... My golly. Yeah. Their own That's fridge. Their own fridge also. And they got their they own... Got spice rack. Own bathroom. My golly, they even got a shower. They even got a shower. Wow. They aren't sweets. I can live with... Uh, I don't know about the fridge. I mean, I don't... Yeah, I mean, I'm amazed. They have... Yeah, I've seen sweets before. The, the fridge is a little bit crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but... I haven't got a mini bar in their fridge. You know, television. Yeah. They TV lie here bad. on their beds and they watch television. Yeah. They can watch the news. They can see what's happening in outside in the society. When they're going back, they can they can uh, keep up with us. The... They got Netflix too. Society. Well, I suppose I should be grateful they haven't got a DVD player. They do. They do. <laughs> if they're in for a long time and they've got wives, do they have conjugal visits? Yeah. They do. They can uh, get, get... Ain't it conjugal? What's a conjugal? Now, you can't just make words up, ma'am. Say it one more time. Let me hear it. And they've got wives. Do they have conjugal visits? Yeah. Is that how y'all say that word? Say it out loud real quick. Did it match up to hers or did it match up to mine? Conjugal. They do. They can get visits two times a week. Yeah. And whatever happens in that room, it's up to them. They can have sex. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we've got sex, television. <laughs> two times a week. In the UK, they have intercourse. You know, couples have intercourse on average of two times a week, right? We just watched that on the side. Fridges. Hmm. Right. Okay. Like, like you have on the outside, like a normal life on the outside, isn't it? Yes, but the idea is, if you go to prison, it's not a normal life. I'm raising my eyebrows at such facilities. Surely being in prison. I'm not mad at the rooms yet. I'm not. I'm not. The fridge threw me for a loop. I honestly support this. Everybody having their own bathroom. In new prisons, if you build a brand new prison, you might as well put bathrooms in all rooms. It'll probably help with the stench. It'll help people stop. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? In America, prison means losing not just your liberty, but some of your home comforts too. I want to meet. Look like a dorm. One of these pampered prisoners. So I'm going to see someone whose crime is so serious that he's got one of the longest sentences in Norway. Two hours south of Oslo and 10 minutes drive from the Swedish border is Norway's flagship prison, Holden. Inmates here live campus style in fully equipped apartment blocks. It's not even a real gate. <laughs> what are they keeping in? Inmates here live campus style in fully equipped apartment blocks that they share with nine other men. I'm about to meet Kirsten. He's serving a very long sentence, but it's not the done thing to ask for details. 
it's a convention in prisons. I mean, you just don't confront somebody and say, what did you do then? Are you Kirsten? Yeah, I'm Kirsten. I'm Hi. Anne. Hi, Anne. Yeah? Nice Hello. to meet you. Hi. Would you like some coffee or tea? Oh, or I could kill a cup of coffee. Thank you. You want some sugar or milk? No sugar, but I would like milk, please. Uh -huh. I have a sentence of uh, 20 years. He got a very, very big sentence. He didn't just fiddle thrums off the bus fare. You know, he's, he's done something which is very wrong. But it must have been quite a relief to... What do you do? Come here. Tech fraud? What do you... <laughs> I didn't believe that the way they treat me, like what, what, what they have an ag agenda, you know, yes. a secret yeah. agenda. Yeah. You can see the, the guards treat us nice. We yeah. are treating each other nice, and actually, it's not so bad to to stay here. I have nothing to complain about. Yeah, you're quite happy here. Yeah, in she is disturbed by his by his general happiness. The fact that, that I know I have to be in prison. I uh, yeah. I have to say I'm, I'm I'm happy that I am here, and not other places that could be worse, you know. Kirsten Selman could be worse. Would it? It's are either at the prison workshops or out on day release. I say they'll all come back at the same time from the yeah workshop. more yeah more yeah. or less. We have this guy. Uh, we have a permission. I don't know. Uh, so he's allowed to going out of the prison for seven or eight hours. Is he? Yeah. What? They do it for, uh, you know, to get ready. To so even though it's very... But this is a max security prison. Don't they usually ship you to a, like a lower tier prison, though, before they get to doing that? High security prison. You can still go out. You have to prove that they, they can have yeah, confidence, confidence in you. Yeah. yeah. How many do you lose that way? If we lose somebody, it's like that. Um, I don't have any exact number, but uh, we have lost a few guys. Some don't come back. They just don't come back. Um, now that really is quite tough on the population, because it means there's a criminal loose out there who shouldn't be. But it's a big difference from uh, this prison and a prison in uh, England. Oh, this one is. Yeah, yeah, this one is very different. I haven't seen anything like this in England. I've been into 135 UK prisons. And in... 135? Very, very, very few of them could I see this sort of setup working. The number of fights in UK prisons and assaults on staff and... Uh, it, it's just different. It's my... This is definitely not working in America. Or the UK. Maybe some places in the UK, like she said, but not not one place in America where I could see this ever. The second you know day at Holden. After hearing about a few prisoners not returning from day release, I need some reassurance that the officers really are in control. So Armand and Linda take me down a secret underground tunnel to see one of their rarely used rooms. Tactical room. Right, so this is when you've got a situation. Yeah, when we got a situation, we had to dress up to be prepared. Good heavens. <laughs> how many of you are trained in riot control? Everybody. Everybody? Yeah. And how many times have you been in riot gear over the last year? One time for me, and that was during night time. Mm. Right, yeah. yeah. But, but totally, like, uh, the last past year, I guess, uh, five to ten times. Right. right. Yeah. That's heavy stuff. Well, actually, be quite strong just to wear it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't like to be clonked with that. That's, that's very heavy. Yeah. No. And yeah. we have different ones that is harder as well. Harder than yeah. that? Yeah. Mm. This is kind of a training baton. Be careful not to kill him. It's for uh, to, to stop him. It's not like when he's already down. What if he's trying to get up? Well, as well, soon as soon as we are many, we are many officers, like five yeah. or six, like we yeah. told you, and uh, we will just rush up on him and lay him yeah. down. Yeah. Can I see somebody in riot? Gear? Yes, we have Monta here. Ah, it's very impressive. It's actually quite difficult to imagine this being needed here. Whereas in some of the big prisons that I've seen in the UK. It's definitely. They said it was a five to ten times, is that what he said? You, you think, where's the riot go? Before, almost before you start. There we go. Now you look even fiercer. Are we in a standoff? Look, brand new, no scuffs, no nothing. 
So you've got a prisoner coming up to you, threatening. What do you do? We have to push him. Yes. On the wall. Against the wall. Him, yeah, yeah. On the wall. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And have control on them on the on the back yeah. side. Yeah. Oh, you so insist. <laughs> No, you're being very gentle. Push yes, on me. Yeah, because we can yep. move against you. Yeah, don't worry, you won't get me on the floor. No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Let's say that's the wall. Yeah. Let's say that's the wall. Yeah. And I do this, then what happens? If you don't stop, <laughs> then you get a... I'm not gonna lie, she's putting... Her lateral speed was NFL type. Look at this. Yeah, and I do this, then what happens? If you... I'm not gonna... Ma'am, that is impressive. If you don't stop... <laughs> <laughs> then you get a uh, hit with a... Uh... Then I get hit with one yeah. of those, yeah. yeah. No, that, that was fine. But you were being very gentle. You'd be much rougher than that, wouldn't yeah. you? You're back in your normal gear now. Yes. That's how you're going to get around. Mm. OK, bye. One, one, bye. you got to be shitting me. Do you think I'm going to take orders from a guard riding a scooter? Look at how happy he's frolicking at work. Who frolics at work? Okay, bye. One, one, bye. You supposed to take a man serious that's kick pushing in a uniform? That is insane. I've never seen scooters in UK prisons. Whether they do I, now, I don't know. Certainly not in my time. I never once saw a scooter. Uh, they tend to run. I'm coming. There's a riot. Lie down immediately. <laughs> lie down, <laughs> lie down. I'm with, I've got a baton. Lie on the floor! Lie on the floor! Oh my god. This is, this is... When the last time you seen an adult male on a scooter? Be honest. Put it in the comments. Be honest. Because I can't recall. And not, not an electric scooter. Like a kick-push scooter. It's hard to imagine a riot here, and I've yet to see more than one or two prisoners together. It's such a calm atmosphere that I'm starting to wonder if they're allowed to stay in bed all day. So where are they all now? So most of the inmates are in the workshops. This is a car workshop. Yeah. 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 So here you also can get a degree. I bet this is popular. Yeah. This is Norway's first garage behind bars. Uh -huh. Raymond is on the mechanics course. He's serving time for murder and has the ominous nickname the Grill Master. <laughs> I'm not going to ask why. Since you've been doing this, what's it done for you? Nej, det är ju allt för huvudet då för att försöka få dagen till att bli normal då. Eh det är ju så tänker jag mycket på avdelning och så är det ju rätt att strikka lite att finna på något där då. Do you want to do something with cars when you leave? I work with cars and I was 13 years When is he going to get out? We're talking about a, a murderer here. I wonder if the prison sentencing is more relaxed than the UK. So, uh, I do much. So you've always liked cars? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. my hobby. Yeah. <laughs> Jolly good. All the courses Super. here, from mechanics and carpentry to printing and sheet metal work, are run by professionals. So, hello. Hi. Hello. So this is Grib. Grib? Yes. Welcome. Hello. Hello, Grib. That's hello. a funny name. Yeah, it's my nickname. Oh, what does it mean? Oh, it's a vulture in Norwegian. Vulture? Yeah. <laughs> Dear me, what have you done to get a nickname uh, like that? I got a tattoo. Ah, In the right. age of 14, so... OK. Not my proudest <laughs> moment, but... So, what happens in this workshop? We make people professional welders and cheap yes. metal workers in actually this room. And do you account for all the tools very carefully? Yeah. Every morning, that's the first thing I do. I go around the shop yeah. and see that everything is here. And I do the same thing because in the afternoon. Because we've had people make some very funny things in our metal shop. One even used tubes for a gun. Yeah. So, we're terribly, terribly careful. Um, but you've got everything sort of just out. Everything is available for the students. So if they really want to hurt me, they can. Inmates can be very inventive with the right equipment, and by golly, there are lots of dangerous tools lying around. Not to mention expensive... Is there a system for when you grab a tool, you gotta let somebody know, 
Or are y'all always gonna slow the prisoners down? We just give them full freedom. Expensive ones. And who pays for all these all these machines? Dedication of Yes. Right. They pay for all of this. Yeah. The students get the Education best machinery, board. and they are trained on the same machinery that the industry use. You couldn't fault the workshops. They were magnificently equipped. They are working for proper formal qualifications and not just messing about. I would bite their hands off for those workshops in mm. British prisons. I really would. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. You? I'm Anne. You yes. my name. Bite their hands off. Pause. For those workshops, period. Imagine if these type of opportunities were available before people went to prison, like as they were growing up. <laughs> For free, just like they're available for free here. Eunice, hello Eunice. Eunice is serving time for drug dealing and attempted murder. How long have you got to go, sentenced to go? I, ha I have my, my sentence, my complete sentence is 13 and a half years. 13? 13. 13 and a half years. Right, yes. okay. Yes, I told them I, I want to go in Holden. Why? Uh, we are here and uh, we have hap we have uh, very lucky we have many options so we can take yes. education this is very yes. important i I'm cannot come out uh, so uh, he, from prison with not broker <laughs> stop stop sir he requested to come here you can request and he only got 13 and a half years for what for a I think with just a bag in my hand then i'm gonna yeah. go back to the same so you applied to come here how long did it take before you came three days Three days? Yes. That's quick. Yes. They must have discharged an awful lot of people. I was escaped. I, when my case happened, I escaped. When I make deal with the police. He got an AM, some drug charges, and he escaped and still got the okay to come here. Shout out Norway. To come or back, yeah. I told them in the deal, I yeah. want to go in Ulrich Morhalden. They say, okay, when you come back, we're going to fix. That's why it took three days. So... You bargained with the police for where you were going to go to prison. Yes. Crazy. They gave in and said you could come here and then you came back. Yes. I must say, I don't think you would find that happening in the UK. That a, I don't think prisoner, so. No an escaped else. prisoner would yeah. bargain with the police yeah. for where he was going to go to prison. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, that's a fascinating insight. She's blue. <laughs> I can't imagine this happening in the UK. I mean, the public would be scandalised. I mean, I think the police's answer in Britain would be the right one is no, Sonny. You come back, and then we'll decide where to send you. Still reeling from Eunice's revelation, there was another shock just round the corner. You know what? I'm not mad at this. I'm, I'm not mad. It's, it's crazy, but I'm not mad at it. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind if they built some of these in the UK. So y'all can stop rapping over the phone. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, hello. hello. How are you? Well, what's going on here? We got Jelani. Hundred thousand dollars. Uh, this is ghastly rap stuff. Like, <laughs> hey, this, you wouldn't have a listen, no. ma'am. Relax. Norwegian rap. Oh. Put Jelani. Put us right here. This this is Norwegian rap for you. What? Well, it doesn't matter what sort of rap it is, it's all horrible. <laughs> well, I'm all for workshops, but spending money on rap, I'm not sure about. Relax. Imagine being in jail listening to somebody No, listen, imagine being in the free world it's gonna sound harsh. Imagine being in a free world, listening to somebody rapping from jail about some inspirational stuff. I, I just feel like, why would I take that advice? Like, why would I? How can you inspire me? Maybe. 
Like, I'm sure Mazza, he's inspired a lot of people. But he wasn't rapping about this, but he's inspired people. But yeah, but like, <laughs> don't get on this in, in this in this in this booth and cap like that. <laughs> right. What do they actually learn here? Well, I think they learn to 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 express themselves. Do they learn this? Do they learn how to handle all the this? Yes, the technical part of it. Yes. These guys are in rehabilitation. I mean, the prison system is, yeah. is, is in Norway is, is built on uh, the idea of rehabilitation, and through art you can achieve a lot just by uh, just by learning to express yourself and 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 own your situation, uh, the good things and the bad things. And uh, these guys are writing lyrics about the predicaments that got him here in the first place. Yeah. Right. I'm She's sick of this shit. <laughs> She's had enough. <laughs> Look at her face. Absolutely not into rap. Some of in here. And I don't actually regard that as particularly purposeful activity. 28-year-old Yolani is serving five years at Hull. I mean, it's purposeful. I'm sure he went. She hating. I don't say what for, so we better stick to chatting about rap. Are they decent? They are decent. No, no swear words. No or swear words. Oh, I, can't have I just that. have one swear word because you know. In, oh, no, that's in, in, yeah, yeah, I can cope know, with that. No excuse. Uh, but but that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Do a line in Norwegian. Give me a blick or see when I come in. Oh, you're joking. That means you're absolutely that means joking. Like they no, no, give no. me. They, they look at me when I come when when I come in. They look at me and look down. Because you're the Norwegian boss, right? Norwegian is the most terrible language. Ye my blick. <laughs> she is negative. You gonna call bro language terrible in front of him? Ye my blick. Osene. Osene. No, yai komer in. Something, something million. Nor. Nor. Yai. Yai. Komer. Komer. In. In. Yes. Ye my blick. Ye my blick. Osene. Osene. Nor yai. Nor yai. Komer in. Komer in. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Did I think it had a huge rehabilitative value? Well, I would say no, but they would say yes. Well, this is all very nice, but these men are criminals, not pop stars. Where's the punishment? That doesn't bold. If you... If they had SJ <laughs> in there or something, I'd be like, all right. Wow, it's a holiday resort. It's a hotel. Yeah, I would. I mean, I, I actually think I've, I've had a good time here. I've benefited. I'm not scared of committing uh, any crime, knowing that I can come to a place like this. I'm not scared of committing any crime if I'm going to come to a place like that. Is that just what I just heard? Not exactly curving. I'm at Holden Prison in Norway, where inmates appear to live in the lap of luxury. It's a maximum security prison, so I'm shocked to learn that inmates are allowed visits from wives and girlfriends twice a week in a private room. This is the more common visit room that we have. No window? No window, because here girlfriends can come. Just tell me what is to stop either drugs being passed by the girlfriend or more importantly criminal information being passed by the man to the girl what's to stop that no nothing in here i don't yeah. think they pass on so much criminality because here it's more girlfriend boyfriend situation don't be that naive ma'am that's a little naive of a statement to make i feel oh right we do yeah. provide Towels, yes. Sheets and condoms. Sheets and the necessary. Like a little boom boom room, ain't it? Yeah. yeah. All right. And they have to clean up after themselves after they've been. Oh, well, I do hope so. Yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> I do hope no, so. Yeah. I can't imagine uh, an easier recipe for exchanges of drugs, exchanges of criminal information, uh, than um, a man and his wife, or a man and anybody for that matter, um, just shut away unsupervised for hours on end. Linda has been a prison officer for eight years, and she's seen a lot of different reactions to Holden in her time. When I hear the criticism that it's very luxurious, well, it's a prison. They are not allowed to go out when they want. They're being told where to go, when to go there by us. But what matters to them is that we treat them nicely. 
that we talk with them with respect. If there's any luxurious, it's that we're human and we're showing off humanity to them. Linda takes me to the prison library, which I've been dying to see. I'm all for broadening prisoners' horizons, but I was appalled at something I discovered there. Prisoners can look up their own crimes and those of their fellow inmates in the Norwegian Criminal Chronicles. Oh, that's crazy. They got a whole little book, like section dedicated. But you could do that too in America, though. You know, everybody knows everybody's crime in, in jail. All you gotta do is go to the library and type in the name. Dear me. Surely they don't think it's a mark of honor to be in here, do they? Well, some do, I think. To think it's, they open it, they say, this is me. That's what I did. Mm, we don't go quite that far. No. Is there anything? Yeah, it's not on display like this as trophies, but you can definitely pull people's paperwork from offline. The law libraries. In, in the last eight years, that, that's really alarmed you that, you know, you thought, oh, you know, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like conflicts. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a person that don't go into arguments very often. Yeah. But uh, I do when I have to but yeah. I don't enjoy it. And I think that's when it's yeah. get loud, someone spits at me. Really? Because I think I don't deserve that. Yeah. So I yeah. think that's really annoying. That depresses you. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. So, but then again, uh, you need to be strict. You need to put down the foot and you need to tell them. What's the suicide rate here? Oh, we've had a few ones, but I think really? over the 10 years we've been open, we've had three or four. Well, three or four in ten years is yeah. not bad. What yeah. effect does that have on the unit when that happens? Oh, it affects us a lot. Yeah, but yeah. the other prisoners on the unit? Same. Yeah. Yeah. So the people that are knowing this person yeah. are all, either you're an inmate or if you're staff, we all feel yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is something we don't want. No. Quite. No. Yeah. Sadly, our prisoner suicide rates in the UK are considerably higher almost 100 a year for the last couple of years. Our reoffending rates are shocking too at 70%. I want right. to talk to the governor, R.A. Hoytel, to find out how Norway has managed to reduce its reoffending. The recidivism rate in Norway is what at the moment? No, it's 25% after five years. Uh, but it, has, it hasn't after been always years. so good. Right. When I started in this business uh, in the 80s, it was 60, 70%. 70 percent. 70 percent recidivism. Yeah. So uh, we have. So that. what's brought it from 70 to 25? In the early 80s, 90. I got nothing to say then. If it's 25 percent after five years, it works clearly. In the 70s, uh, the prison officers was just guards, just take care of the security, yeah. security work. But in the middle of the 90s. We changed the whole officer, prison officer role. So they also should uh, work with rehabilitation, help the inmates, uh, more like a social worker. So we have a dual role in uh, after uh, middle, middle of the 90s. Well, that is interesting. Our reoffending rates now were as high as Norway's were 40 years ago. So it shows how far they've managed to reduce them. Our prison officers are busy and I don't know that they would have time to engage quite this far. Sound like y'all need to make a little time then. Hold on, wait a minute. Armand has been a prison officer for 18 years and he's been at Hulden. He playing Texas Hold'em or something? Go fish? Hold'em since it was built. Don't judge people because we're not supposed to do that when we're here. We work with every kind of uh, offenders, uh, like sex offenders, uh, drug addicts, uh, murderers, everything. I'm here just to try to help them to get better when they get out of prison. Because we don't have any death penalty in Norway and we don't have any prisoners are being inside for life. They're going back out again. Once they do leave Holden, 
I wouldn't be surprised if inmates might even miss some of the services on offer. All right, I feel like they would come back just to be just to be in here, but I'm sure like the court would clock that they just come back to be put in here. I'm going to look into a dentist surgery. I don't know why, but I am. And apparently the dentist comes once or twice a week, yeah, which a is a jolly sight more than they do in the UK. It's like you find on the outside. My golly. Yeah. Look at that. Mm. It's a fully equipped dentist surgeon. Oh, wow. Wow, they got a better dental plan than me. Right. Yeah. And the dentist comes how often? Once or twice a week. Once or twice a week. Mm. No, that, that is terrific. Mm. That really is, yeah. It's good, I think. I was going to say, this is replicating the outside world. Actually, it's better than the outside world. That is certainly... Yeah, this is cl very clean. Much better than any ordinary law-abiding citizen in the UK could expect. And if that wasn't deluxe enough, I was in for another shock around the corner. Something that wouldn't go amiss in any English village. Oh my gosh, well, this is a real shock. A store? <laughs> I could shop it. And do it quite well. Oh, wow. Apparently, inmates can go shopping in small groups and buy groceries to cook their evening meal together. We're talking here that you can really produce a, a nutritious meal with fresh stuff. I mean, what's not to like? So they're, they're learning real stuff. Then if you got leftovers, you got a little fridge in your little dorm room. There is cooking. Yes, I don't like sushi. I don't like raw stuff. Yuck, 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 yuck. I mean, I wouldn't want them living on caviar every day of the week, but I see no reason why uh, a prisoner should not get the full range of food if they're learning from it. Yeah, for sure. But if you're going to come out and you're going to mix in normal society and you're going to cook for a family and you're going to cook for friends, it does you no harm if you've learnt to do various things. And they will make a mess of it from time to time, just like life. And that's the idea here, it replicates. So when they want to cook a real meal, do they have like access to the kitchen at all times or what? It's life. I think if you tried to um, do that... Or do they have to make like makeshift grills like in America and in the UK and use kettles and things of that nature? <laughs> there would be a public resistance. And a mini supermarket isn't the only thing that you'd never find in a UK prison. Here, the prisoners really can have a home away from home. So what's that? A mean, visiting house. house. For uh, daddy's in prison. Daddy's in prison. Yeah, yeah. they have to go uh, uh, daddy in prison course before they can use this. Right. A program. So they have to pass the test. Pass really. the test and have to go yeah. through the program. And then they can have overnight stays with the kids and uh, their wives or if there are girlfriends. I'm pretty sure that's pretty beneficial. That's pretty beneficiary right there. That's good for the kids and the, the mental health of a husband and, or boyfriend or whatever, the father in here. I don't know if they're they married or They can have wives and girlfriends. Well, no, not at the same time. No, 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 no. <laughs> just, just as well. <laughs> so they can sort of live as a family? Yeah. For what, two nights? Uh, one night, uh, maybe two nights during the weekend. One or two nights during the weekend? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that certainly wouldn't happen in the UK. No. She is sick of this. No. Yeah. Well, it's, it's about uh, getting to connect with the, with the kids again. Maybe, she maybe some like of them haven't up. had she any connection with the kids for a long time. Had it barn, Timo and Gamel, Samboer, sit on five stone here in Halden for no one like I've done. Får du besökshus och sånt eller? Inte nog besökshus dessvärre. Du borde ju nästan få det då från fängslet. Eller där är en komplicerad det är en komplicerad sak, men enkelt fortalt så handlar det om på något sätt förtiden min och vem som var inkluderad i eh kallade lovbrudde man första stein. Professional radio producer Mina visits Holden once a month to produce a talk radio show presented by the inmates. Punishment for criminal behavior in Norway is prison. Like everywhere else, you lose your freedom. The thing that you cherish the most, being able to make your own decisions, that's gone. 
So it doesn't really matter if there's a studio there, if the walls are white. Or, that can just help you not go totally insane till you are let out, because we're not in the Middle Ages. If we were, I would say, I mean, throw away the key if that's what you want to do. But they're going to move next door. They're going to, their kids are going to go to the same school as your kids. So don't be an idiot. I mean, do you want to lock somebody in a tiny room and then think everything is going to be okay when you let them out 15 years later? Jag vet inte mina. Du vet vad jag blir. Jag jag sitter. Du vet. Vi ska gå på fullt i på den dagen. Så väl på att skilja mig. Jag är i fängelse men jag har inte fyllt 28 år en gång. Rather than bottling their anger up, inmates are given the chance to broadcast their grievances about life in prison to the nation. Och det är som är kriminella. Vad 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 är den bästa måten att straffa dere på som vi råder aldrig gör det. Igjen. Kan inte driva och skrämma folk lika gärna. Vad fan vi lever i 2020. Vi er, det är om bilder där och få där jag betalt så du slipper och kommer tillbaka så du slipper och kostar staten och mer så du kan bli betala skatt du har bra. Ja, så betalar du miljoner i skatt med ja. livet ditt man du har nog i tillbaka. Ja. So you just get them going with communication because when your communication has been fuck this and fuck that and hitting and going nuts for every little tiny thing now they're communicating. Så det, det kom det som jag menar att det kommer väldigt mycket om om på dig själv då. Ja. Vad du vill vi göra vidare med livet ditt. Given a straight choice, um, would I put my money on somebody coming out here, uh, staying out of trouble, and somebody coming out of your average UK prison, staying out of trouble? Well, there's no doubt about it. There's no contest. My my money would go on the chap uh, coming Definitely. out of here. One man Definitely. who did eventually come out of here was once known as the most dangerous man in all of Norway. And it's about time I met him. On the outside world? In the free world you gonna be? Stay at Holden Prison. It's my last day at Holden Prison. And it certainly has been eye-opening. But while it's luxurious in many ways, even prison officers here know there's nothing glamorous about searching for drugs. Right, what have we got here? We are going to see a special toilet. Right. It's for yeah. drugs control. Sometimes, if they have drugs on them, they get them inside, they get yeah, them inside get them their inside. mouth. Yeah. yeah. And then we bring him here. Yes. And this is the other side of the window. Right. Because when we are doing this kind of uh, control... Can I have a hand, please? Yes, of course. And we have yes. two guards on this side of the window. And we see only that way. Yes. He doesn't see us. No. And to, due to the control bit, it's after we went to the toilet, it's this machine yes. who starts to work. And it's cleaning up what uh, he's yes, been... Yes, uh, Yeah. And it comes out on the other side here. That's how we find the drugs. Yeah. And we have a kind of a, a way to, to know when it's uh, gone through. So we give them corn. So when we get the corn out, we yeah. know that it's been through the system, that's yeah. not nothing anymore is hiding. Halden runs a specialist rehab unit where addicted inmates because the body doesn't break down corn. All of it at least. Can get clean. One former addict who was treated here was Trond Herrickson. Trond's criminal career spanned armed robbery, kidnapping, and escaping from prison. He was so notorious that the press named him Norway's most dangerous man. An addict from an early age, prison was his finishing school. But it was only when he came to Holden that Trond finally turned his life around. My first time in prison was in 1980. Then I was 14 years old, 14 years and three weeks. So I was, yeah, yeah. So I was uh, really young. I, I, I put the last uh, shot with heroin outside these walls, uh, 20 October. 2010. How were you taking a shot of heroin? Had you been released? On the park, parking place. <laughs> and you'd been released? Uh, no, when I was going in, before I go into the you prison. You were coming in? And I was had... coming in. And I... Bro, it was diabolical. He was in the, before I go in, let me get a little shot of this dog. Get the heroin from? I took it from Oslo and I, uh, I put the last shot outside the walls in, in the parking place. And um, what was the moment that you remember when you decided it all had to change? I think one of the most difficult things for a person is to be honest with yourself, you know, to look yourself in the mirror and say, okay, you have done a lot of shit, uh, really. Yeah. <laughs> in the, and, uh, and to change this thing, you have to, uh, to say goodbye to the drugs, 
you have to say goodbye to a lot of friends. Now, supposing you hadn't come here, do you think you'd have just changed everything around anyway, simply because you'd had enough of field life? I don't know, but because I meet Ari Heydal, the, the chief of this prison. Yes. He has been following, following me since I was 14 years, you know, yeah. and he said, you have to come to Holland to, to uh, go to this uh, drug floor, you know, yeah. for helping you. So he fixed me here, you know. So yeah. I have, uh, I have <laughs> so Ari is, have been a really important uh, person in my life. I have cost... You can almost say a father figure. This uh, society over 100 million Norwegian kroner. 100, Damn. that's true. And I can never pay that back. It makes perfect sense to have rehabilitation at the center. Uh, I've always said this, I've said it so long and so loudly, but I've never listened to it. It actually makes perfect sense as a tool of public protection uh, and of saving money. Agree. Aside from practical help, it turns out there's spiritual help available too. Deep within the woods, Halden is running one of the most unusual courses I've ever come across. Inmates can opt out of general prison life for 21 days to attend a retreat. Da tar jeg oss igjennom den vanlige, det, det vanlige ritualet. Da tror jeg vi kan starte med et par dype pust. Og så setter vi fokuset på, på kroppen. For some reason, when they were doing this just now, sitting in a circle, I envisioned Carl Pilkington sitting there and looking at the camera and going, right? <laughs> Right? This is a load of shite. No, I'm just playing. But like, that's what I envisioned. Through silent meditation, rituals and reflection, led by the prison's chaplains, inmates are expected to be honest with themselves and confront what they've done. Why do you think the retreat is so important? Uh, it's because uh, it changes people. It's a uh, very good process that uh, asks a question, who am I? Uh, what good, what bad in my life? How can things change? Uh, who do I want to be? What am I longing for? It's all the big questions and uh, it's a lot of time in silence and there is a fellowship. Oh, I have learned my do it. That's why I love my retreat. Are them for the dark folk behind this woman, men skaker, this woman needs that. Hva er du mest spent på på Bastia? Ja? Når du kommer dit? Jeg vet ikke aldri hva jeg får bare se, for det var helt ærlig, men det er gleder meg ja, fordi jeg kan få de permisjonene og jeg kan bruke mer tid med ungene. How long have you been in prison? I've been in prison six years. Six years? Yeah. And how long here? Six years. You've done all six years here? Yep. Yeah. Now when you're going out to live a normal life, you're going back into the life that caused the problem. No, so absolutely. how are you Not going to avoid time. that? Uh, I have no contact with any of my friends from the past life. So you think you were in bad company? Some of them, it was a bad company. That's what you gotta do, man. You gotta want to change and you gotta change your environment. And some of them, it was a bit my own bad decision. So I cannot blame other people yeah. for my decision. I'm a grown person and yeah. uh, this, this was my decision. Full accountability. If I don't learn now, when I'm gonna learn? Yeah. I'm a grown man, so... I think that uh, I will live one free life without crime. That's good. Well, good luck. I'm coming to the end of my time at Holden, and it's certainly given me food for thought. It's been interesting. My problem with the whole thing is I'm very enthused about some things, really enthused, some of which are extremely hard-edged, like the, uh, the workshops. That's fine. I can say I wish every UK prison was like that. But when you look at the whole concept, and it's a very expensive concept at that, I want to be enthusiastic, but I've had too much experience in the past of being told that something was wonderful, of hearing loads, She's as we have here, loads PTSD. of anecdotal evidence that it works and it's unique. And then some years down the line, when the statistics start to come through, um, it's really rather disappointing. When it was built 10 years ago, Alden was the first of its kind, a humane and luxurious prison. But the evidence that it works is unclear. And if the Norwegian government remains unconvinced, the first of its kind might also be the last. If this prison is so exceptional, 
that it produces exceptional results. Why doesn't your government, the Norwegian government, simply say, right, this is the future. All prisons from now on are going to be like Alden. Uh, that's because this prison was uh, quite expensive to build. We have uh, new prisons in Norway now that's not looking like this prison, but uh, I think, the, as I told you, the most important thing is uh, how the officers work with the inmates and that the inmates have uh, activities, that they have workshops, that they have something to do all day. That's the most important thing. You see, my worry is you've got, you've got this very expensive prison which appears to work yeah. at this point. Yeah, I think so. I think this work. But outside, yeah. has it done it anything work. that the other prisons haven't yeah. done? Yeah, that's the big question. It looks crazy. It's very clear that the small units, the workshops and the officers' relationships with inmates are working. But what's less clear is whether this level of luxury is needed for rehabilitation. All I'm interested in is whether this approach seriously reduces the reoffending rates. And if that means a bit like of luxury, then OK. What I'm wondering, as I finally leave here, is whether I've spent the last three days looking at something which is very nice, but which is actually just a puff of theory and a very, very expensive theory at that. Oh, God. Or whether I've actually been encountering a revolutionary way to treat criminals. I think there should be a vetting process, though. Like, the fact that bro requested to come here <laughs> after, after escaping, and that was one of his rule stipulations, like, that ain't... That ain't it. <laughs> but anyway, TLL, leave a like, comment. Let me know what you think.